Hello, and welcome to Easy English Interviews, the podcast for English language learning. My name is Chris Kent. I'm an associate professor of English as a Second Language in Japan. And in this podcast, I interview interesting people in Easy English so English students can practice their listening comprehension skills. Please enjoy listening to the interviews, and if you would like to check your comprehension, please look at the questions in the podcast episode notes. Or go to kjkentmsed.substack.com and click on the post for this episode. There, you can subscribe to my Substack and receive email notifications whenever a new interview is released. Interview を楽しみください。理解度を確認したい場合は、ポッドキャストノートの質問を見るか、urlkjkentmsed.substack.com にアクセスして、このエピソードをクリックしてください。そこで私のサブスタックをサブスクライブして、新しいインタビューがリリースされるたびに電子メール通知を受け取ることができます。Okay, and now for the easy English interview.Okay, so today we are here with Anton McCloy, a very good friend of mine who is from New Zealand. Thank you for doing this, Anton. Very welcome. Good to see you again. Okay. So, my first question for you today is why did you come to Japan to teach English? Can you explain a little bit about how you came to be in your situation now?、Uh, okay, well, many, many years ago, 26 or 27 years ago, I was、uh, teaching high school in New Zealand.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I had just started. But like many、uh, young New Zealanders,、uh, we like to, to travel. For a little bit before we settle down into family and serious work life.、Mm-hmm. So, I was looking for an opportunity to, to teach, and I was lucky that an old、uh, university friend happened to be living and teaching in Japan,、mm-hmm. uh, and he was also about to move out, out of Japan.、Mm-hmm. So,、uh, I was talking to him, and he said, Come and And take my job and, and、uh, take over my apartment. And it seemed like an opportunity that was too good to,、uh, to pass up.、Mm. And that was what part of Japan was that? That was、uh, Shizuoka. Shizuoka. Like Shizuoka, in a, a small town called Fujieda. Ah, Fujieda, yeah.、Yes. I lived there too. <laughs> yes. Lovely part of the world. Oh, that's an interesting story. I think that's the first time I've heard of like, coming to take over a job. Um, so, before you came to Japan, then what did you study in college and why did you study that? Through university, I, I was、uh, majoring in geography, cultural geography, the geography of people,、mm. um, why people live where they do, why people move, and history. It was all targeted towards becoming a teacher.、Right. I, was, um, yeah, I was pretty focused on that from a relatively young age.、Mm-hmm. So, you were always going to be teaching some, something? Yes, yes,、mm-hmm. yes. At some stage, it was my.、Uh, I was kind of surrounded by teachers also, not my parents, but aunts and uncles and the, the small community that I lived in. I see. And so, you know, now that you're in Japan and you're teaching, can you explain a little bit of, you know, what are the good parts of your job and what are the more not so good or bad parts of your job? Uh, the situation I'm in now, where I work for myself and I,、uh, I employ one person to work here as well, the good parts is being connected to the, to the community. It's a small、uh, community in Japan. It's called a small community, Fuji City, I guess.、Mm-hmm. So it's being connected、uh, to, to people,、uh, having that closeness.、Mm. Um, the bad, well, the Not the bad part of the job, the job that I, it's never ending, it's 24 7. I can't go anywhere、mm. and, and not to be working.、Uh, we get phone calls and emails, and, and、uh, of course, out in the street,、uh, people are always recognizing us.、Uh, yeah, if you're in a small community, I guess anywhere you go, people know who you are. People know who I am and where I work and what I do.、Yes. Mm-hmm. Kind of a celebrity. Wow, when you look like I do in Japan, <laughs> it's hard to miss me. 
Okay, so when you were younger, like before you started school, what did you want to be when you grew up and why? Ah, yes, well, of course, the old nut, the, uh, the old thing in New Zealand is always want to be an All Black, want to be a professional rugby player, mm. play for New Zealand or, or cricket, mm-hmm. the other major sport for boys at that time. Right. They were always the major ones. Uh, my family was farming family, sheep farming family, but I never had any any real uh, probably talent or or will to do that. Mm. Um, I was, like I said earlier, I was kind of young, 14 or 15, when I realized that I, I think teaching was was where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. Right. Oh, interesting. So farming, so your family did farming. Um, was it also like your relatives also did farming or just yes. your, your family? Your yes, relatives. yes. Mm. Uh, so a grandfather's farm mm-hmm. was uh, split into two and developed and... Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Japan. Um, what places have you visited in Japan? And of those places, what places are your favorite? Uh, it's um, kind of embarrassing. Um, I'm very poorly traveled hmm. in Japan. Um, that said, I've been to Okinawa, um, the usual Hiroshima, Kyoto, Nagano, uh, Hokkaido. Hmm. I, I I enjoy Nagano. I've been there three or four times. The first time was for the Olympics, and it was a it was a real eye opener. My first time up there it was great. But Hokkaido, mm. I think, is probably my favorite place in Japan. I, I imagine Hokkaido must kind of remind you of home a little bit. Yes, driving in Hokkaido, the big wide open fields on either side of the mm. road, the the dry, fresh air is is very similar. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, about the culture then, so those are the places you've been, but what um, parts of Japanese culture do you particularly like? Interesting. Um, the, the food mm-hmm. and the, the care and love that goes into to the food in Japan, mm-hmm. I think is um, quite special about Japan. Right. Um, I'm not a big food person, but the standard here is always fantastic uh, of the food. Uh, also, the the diligence um, of of Japanese people when they say they are going to do something, mm. it gets done, right. and in usually in good time, right. as as opposed to a lot of things in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was just thinking about that the other day. I remember. You know, in Canada, if there was some roadworks to be done or, you know, something, you know, some civil engineering type mm. stuff, it seems to take years <laughs> in yes. Canada, whereas in, in Japan it gets done uh, eventually, unless it's some big project. Like, I know near here there's a new bridge that they're building that they said won't take, or it will take about two more years to finish, but it looks pretty much done to me. <laughs> mm. yes. they, uh, they get things moving. Yeah. Um Okay, so my next question is a bit more personal. So how about like hobbies? So when you're not working, what things do you like to do and why? Well, it's not uh, a recognized hobby per se. I, um, I look after a sports ground here mm. um, and that's almost therapeutic. Mm. Um, cutting grass and, and preparing a sports ground uh, for cricket. Um, mm-hmm. For some strange reason, I, I really do enjoy doing that. Yeah, well, I imagine just getting out of the house and just like not thinking too much about mm. something, just getting the job done that you can look at it afterwards and say, I did that. Yes, it's <laughs> immediate know? feedback. You can see what you've achieved mm-hmm. in just a few hours. Mm. Okay. And how about your family? Um, do you have a family here in Japan? Yes, I'm uh, married mm-hmm. uh, with two, two wonderful daughters. Mm. Uh, a senior high school first grade and a junior high school first grade. Yeah, already senior high school. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. And they are, I guess, doing some sort of club at school. What kind of things do they do? Uh, yes, the older girl. She she's in the kendo club. Oh wow. Yes, it was uh, an interesting choice in her junior high school, and she's staying with kendo mm. through senior high school. And the younger daughter, she's just started a table tennis club. 
Ah, now that's is, fun. Yes, yes, it's good for her. Yeah, yeah, it matches her personality. So she can probably beat dad pretty easily at she's, table tennis? She's getting there. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, um, how about any plans for your future? Do you have anything that you are aiming towards here in Japan? Um, no, not really. I don't have a, a set plan. Um, mm. I'm happy with how my business is now with me and, and one other teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we don't, we're not looking to expand or make our business bigger or open other branches. Mm. Um, maybe in time I'll reduce my teaching hours mm. and get in a, a second staff mm. member. But uh, in terms of retirement, I, I'm not, not sure. Mm. I really, really don't have a, a set plan for that. Mm. Yeah, I think it's you know still pretty early to think about retirement, but um, yeah, probably reducing the workload as you get a bit older is a good idea. Mm. Okay, my last question is something I ask everyone, and as an English teacher, you would be an expert in this. If you could give any advice to students who are studying English, what would your advice be? If they ever get an opportunity to spend time in an English-speaking country mm-hmm. without... Uh, being surrounded by other Japanese people, please take that opportunity. Right. Uh, it's I've seen it so many times. Uh, students change mm-hmm. almost in three months or six months. They come back and their 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 English ability is fantastic and their confidence is is really boosted. It's uh, a magical change almost. Yeah, I would have to agree. I think. Until you really need English, it's hard to understand, you know, what's important and what's not. You tend to just, if you study out of a textbook, you might study conversations that you're actually never going to have. (laughs) So being in the country where you need to use it every day, you understand what you need to say to get certain things done. Yes, yes, Mm. yes. Like when we first came to Japan, (laughs) learning Japanese. Having to plan what you were going to say or think about what you were going to say before you entered the shop or approached Mm -hmm. someone. Mm. Good, good. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Anton, for this uh, short interview. And uh, it's very nice to be here with you again in Shizuoka. So thank you very much. Excellent. You're very welcome. Great to see you again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Anton McCloy-sensei. And I would like to say thank you very much for listening. Also, I hope that you will try the comprehension questions when you have free time so you can check your listening ability in English. And please, if you would like to be notified by email whenever a new podcast is up, please become a subscriber at kjkentmsed.substack.com. That's kjkentmsed.substack.com. If you become a paid subscriber there, you can read transcripts of the interviews and check your comprehension answers. You can also check out Easy English Interviews now at easyenglishinterviews.locals, that's L-O-C-A-L-S, dot com. All right, thank you again and see you next time when we will speak with another interesting person. Bye-bye from Easy English Interviews.